Now that you understand how the net present value method works, we can add some additional wrinkles, like the impact of intangible benefits and a way to compare mutually exclusive projects. The NPV technique relies on tangible costs and benefits that typically can be easily quantified. Some investment projects, especially high-tech projects, fail to make it through initial capital budget screens because only the project's tangible benefits are considered. Intangible benefits might include increased quality, improved safety, or enhanced employee loyalty. By ignoring intangible benefits, capital budgeting techniques might incorrectly eliminate projects that could be financially beneficial to the company. To avoid rejecting projects that actually should be accepted, analysts suggest two possible approaches. In the first approach, calculate net present value ignoring intangible benefits. If the NPV is negative, decide whether the project offers any intangible benefits that are worth at least the amount of the negative NPV. In the second approach, we project rough, conservative estimates of the value of the intangible benefits and incorporate these values into the NPV calculation. Let's assume that Berg Company is considering the purchase of a new mechanical robot. Based on the negative net present value of 30,493, the proposed project is not acceptable. This calculation, however, ignores important information. The company's engineers believe that purchasing this machine will improve the quality of the company's products. As a result, future warranty costs will be reduced. The company also believes that this higher quality will translate into higher future sales. The new machine will also be much safer than the previous one. This company can incorporate this new information into the capital budgeting decision by simply asking whether the reduced warranty costs, increased sales, and improved safety benefit have an estimated present value of at least $30,493. If yes, then the project is acceptable. Alternatively, analysts can estimate the annual cash flows of these benefits. In our initial calculation, we assumed each of these benefits to have a value of zero. Right, the company estimates that improved sales will increase cash inflows by $10,000. They also estimate that the annual cost outflows would be reduced by $5,000 as a result of lower warranty claims, reduced injury claims, and missed work. Consideration of the intangible benefits results in the following revised NPV calculations. Using these conservative estimates, the NPV is positive and Berg should accept the project. In theory, companies should accept all projects with positive NPVs. However, companies rarely are able to adopt all positive NPV proposals. First, proposals are often mutually exclusive. This means that if the company adopts one proposal, it would be impossible or impractical to adopt the other proposal. For example, a company may be considering the purchase of a new packaging machine and is looking at various brands and models. It needs only one packaging machine. Once the company has determined which brand and model to purchase, the others will not be purchased, even though they may also have a positive net present value. Even in instances where projects are not mutually exclusive, managers often must choose between various positive NPV projects because of limited resources. When choosing between alternative proposals, it is tempting to simply choose the project with the higher NPV. In this example of two mutually exclusive projects, each one has a 10-year life and a 12% discount rate. The net present value of project A and project B is obtained by subtracting the initial investment from the present value of the net cash flows. Project B has the higher NPV. It would seem that the company should adopt it. However, project B also requires more than twice the original investment of project A. 
In choosing between two projects, the company should also include in its calculation the amount of the original investment. One simple method of comparing alternative projects is the profitability index. This method takes into account both the size of the original investment and the discounted cash flows. The profitability index is calculated by dividing the present value of the net cash flows by the amount of the initial investment. Any project with a positive NPV will have a profitability index above 1. The profitability index for each of the mutually exclusive projects is 1.45 for Project A and 1.23 for Project B. The profitability index of Project A exceeds that of Project B, so Project A is more desirable. If these were not mutually exclusive projects and if resources were not limited, the company should invest in both projects since both have positive NPVs. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. A simplifying assumption made by many analysts is that projected results are known with certainty. In reality, projected results are only estimates based upon the forecaster's belief as to the most probable outcome. One approach for dealing with such uncertainty is sensitivity analysis. A company should perform a post audit which is a thorough evaluation of how well a project's actual performance matches the original projections.